Playing double an enemy, but struggling to climb? Need some tips in arena mode? I'm blacked out on crypto, and let's get right into this video. First thing we're gonna do is cover the marketplace. So for the marketplace, let me show off the birds that we can pick up. I'm gonna show off alternatives as well. We're gonna go with Little Owl, Eggshell, Pigeon Post, Hair Dagger. We're gonna want it to be 57 speed if we go with the double an enemy with Lamb and Piranha. If you go with a double go to version, you're gonna want one that has 59 speed. Let's go to 57 speed. This one here is probably the one we're gonna wanna pick up with 57 speed. It has Pigeon Post, Eggshell, Little Owl, and Hair Dagger. What Pigeon Post does is it transfers all debuffs to the target. You have Eggshell here, which applies an aroma to yourself. Aroma makes you the taunt target and it makes Axes focus you. Then you have Little Owl, so you can end up backdooring your opponent. You can use Eggshell and then Pigeon Post, and then you can make all your other Axes be able to focus that Axie as well. Then you have Hair Dagger, which is 120 damage, 30 shield, draw a card if this Axie attacks at the beginning of the round. So if you are the first one to attack, you'll be able to draw a card. This is also nice because it's mixed damage to be able to do extra damage into plants. Now I'm gonna show you the cheaper alternatives. The cheaper alternatives, you just get rid of Hair Dagger, you get Swallow or Grandma's Fan. These, you're gonna want it to be 61 speed. Actually, right now, they're about the same price, so I'd probably pick up a Hair Dagger one. So yeah, they're about the same price right now. I'd probably pick up a Hair Dagger one, to be honest. Pigeon Post, Eggshell, Little Owl, and Grandma's Fan. What Grandma's Fan does is it applies a chill to the target for two rounds. It means your opponent can't go into last stand. Then, if you decide not to go with that and you wanna go with Swallow, Swallow does 110 damage, 20 shield, deals 120 damage if this actually attacks first. It's a little bit better than Grandma's Fan in some circumstances if you need that little extra oomph of damage. But Grandma's Fan all around is nice because then it makes it so your opponent can't go last stand and you never have to worry about last stand, which is one problem that you'll run into with an enemies a lot is if your opponent goes in the last stand, it can really mess up turns. Now that we've covered the birds, let me cover the anemones. There's three different versions of the anemones you can go with that I personally like. First one is the anemone with Piranha, the double anemone, Nemo, and Piranha, you're going to want it to be 57 speed. So you can run two with the Piranha, or you can run two with whatever other style you like. But I would always run probably two of the same. You can run a Piranha and a Lamb. But if you're running the Gota variant, I'd run both as Gota. So what an enemy does is it's 80 damage, 35 shield. Successful attacks restores 50 health for each an enemy part this Axie possesses. Because you possess two, because you possess two, it does 100 health. And then you have Piranha, which is 100, 120 damage and 30 shield. We also have Nemo here, which is 20. It's a zero cost card and it gains you an energy when comboed with another card. But if you don't want the Piranha variant, you can go with the Lamb variant. Like I said, it's also really nice. What Lamb does, it does 110 damage, 40 shield, deal 120% damage if this Axie's HP is below 50%. And then last for the Anemones as well, instead of Lamb, you can go with Gota. You want these ones to be 55 speed. What Gota does is it does 80 damage, 40 shield, destroy one of your opponent's energy. Now let's hop into game and I'll show you how to line up this comp. You're gonna wanna line up the comp in a 50-50, something like this. You want your bird to be on one side to be able to support your enemy, whichever one you want. You can have it over here or you can have it over here to be able to support. Then you'll be able to use eggshell slash pigeon post. And if you're running into another 50-50 split, but you wanna destroy your opponent's enemy instead of going for a backdoor, you can use an eggshell plus pigeon post and you can have this aqua and this aqua be able to focus on the anemone on that side. So this is how you're gonna to wanna to line it up, just like this. One on this side, one on this side, and then your bird back here. Remember, if they're lined up down the middle like this, it's a 50-50% chance that it'll go left or that'll go right. If they're lined up on the same side like this as well with you, it means these axes over here that are lined up in the same side will go automatically always go to the same side you're on. But if it's here in the middle, it'll go left or right. So our opponent is running a plant aqua mech. It is a 45 speed mech. And then his aqua is an enemy. And then he has another heal here on his plant as well. He's using cattail, cactus, and vegetable bite. It's a pretty good setup because he's running his two guys down the middle, which means both these guys are 50-50, where he's guaranteed to attack with this guy on this side. That kind of gives us a little bit of a safety net. First turn, we're just going to gain energy here with a double Nemo and probably do nothing else. I was thinking about maybe acroing, but I, I still don't think it's worth it because we're going to need to be able to one combo him with a big attack because he's running Shroom's Grace here to end, uh, end up gaining back his health. My opponent passes, which is nice for us. 
here we actually do have the play. And I think we're going to go pretty aggro. I think we're going to go full on into him. Try and kill off his plant before he even gets a play on it. The damage that we're going to be able to put out is 110. Let's see, 270. It's like 390. 460, 470. It should be enough to kill his plant. Nice thing for him is he plays four cards on his rim. Hopefully we win this 50-50 and he actually attacks the tiny turtle side. So it's more than enough damage. We end up killing, he ended up playing Cattail, so he ended up getting to draw cards off of us though. So it's a perfect kill for him, which is really nice. Looks like we're just going to pass this turn. We got a pretty bad draw all around. Good thing for him is he's going to be able to get support from his beast here, because as long as he goes first, this guy will attack this side guaranteed. And then he can use his beast to assist as well. We're going to try and play a lamb plus Nemo here just to get some extra damage off on him. I'm also going to acro to speed myself up, and then I'm going to save the black male to play into next turn with him. So he does. He comes full on aggro in. He only plays actually one card on his beast. We should be able to end up living through the card from his beast. And we're going to have our anemone alive as well as our bird. So with this bird here, we should be able to kill his anemone. Seal Nutcracker is not enough. We know he just played four cards of shield. And because our health is lower, we're now faster. So we can actually play all four cards here because we're faster because he lowered our health. He may end up killing our anemone with like a double Nutcracker play. But I still think maybe something like this is okay, just to guarantee that we kill his anemone here. He just tries to play on his anemone, but it's not going to be enough. We'll end up killing his anemone, and then it's just going to be his mech, which his mech is going to have a really tough time versus my backliner. Now, we could just pass, but we're going to play the lamb and the anemone. Remember, if you are below half health, you'll actually do more damage. Our opponent decides to just to surrender. Okay. This one sucks to go against too. Nice thing is we're faster though. And remember, like like I said, this this style is just is so much harder to be to set up. Okay, so we're reverses another a double and enemy setup. It's the one with piercing sound and the double heals, and then the hair dagger bird, which has eggshell blackmail. Really, really nice setup, and it's gonna be very tough for us to actually beat. The reason being it's gonna be tough is because the goat is here has a lot more control than our comp actually has. First turn he just passes, which is nice for us. We may be able to go like full in on one of these an enemy, but I don't think it's even worth it. It may be better just to take a pass turn here. He plays double goat on one side and then a single heal on the opposite. Nice thing though is he ends up speeding us up so we can end up healing before he ends up getting to do anything on this side. The more aggressive side will probably be this side here. He's probably gonna use his bird now to try and attack in with it. And we're gonna attempt to go for a double heal. He played three energy, but got one back. So he should still be on five energy. If he has three bird cards, we're, we're pretty much doomed. Because each bird card does 130, 140 almost, which should end up killing our anemone. And he does play three bird cards, but it's a little out of play. I think he, maybe he thought he could backdoor me here, but it doesn't actually work. Nice for us, we get to heal up twice. And we'll also be able to kill his anemone here. He's played three cards now, so he should have four more energy. For us, I think we're just going to go for a single heal. A new one on a single heal. Not to apply too much pressure on him. Also, it's not worth healing this guy. We're, we're okay with losing this anemone now. So he does a kill our enemy. He's also going to be Nemoing to gain one energy back. So he's going to be on three energy next turn. Nice thing for us is we're still lower health. So whatever we play here, we'll get to go first. I'm thinking of acroing to speed ourselves up. Going for a double enemy and a tiny turtle to put up shield to maybe defend against his bird play. So he plays fully on his enemy as well. Going for a triple heal. Which is going to actually put us back into like the same situation. Where we're just kind of wasting each other's time. His bird is one card away from being able to kill. So he wouldn't be able to kill us with two cards there with his bird anyways. So I think going for something like this is actually probably a good idea. And kind of safe. Nice. We actually stun his bird here. Which is really, really good for us. We get to apply massive pressure onto him. We also stun his bird. Our axes are both lower HP, so we can combo again with our two axes into maybe killing off his enemy here. Again, I don't really have the best play in the world, so maybe we just acrobatic up, go for a single heal here, and just try to apply some pressure onto him. Smart play from him would be to use two cards here and bait out his bird again. He goes for a little owl just to get himself out of stun. 
with the speed up though, it's going to actually be really nice. We should end up being able to kill him if he doesn't go for a full heal. He only goes for a single heal. But he's also going to be on 3 energy again. Not the best draw. Not the best draw. If he has another triple heal or triple defend, we won't be able to kill him. This is going to do lower damage. I think even like a double heal will, will get him out of enough shield to really defend against this. And then we're going to be in trouble after that. But still, we're going to try and play into him. Yep. Bad draw for us. He was able to defend up. Another Gota plus heal. Another acro to keep herself faster than his bird. And to try and kill off as an enemy here. Again, if he has another big like heal setup, he would need you would need to have pretty much two heals to get out of this again. Nice things it doesn't look like he has it. We're also gonna be faster, and we should end up being able to kill off his bird here too. We're gonna play the two cards, end up killing his bird. And that's GG. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.